What's up everybody, David here and welcome to my second vlog on the road to Vegas. I've just completed week two of my training and it's been a really busy and tiring week. I started the week with so much energy, million things on my to-do list, raring to go, but come Friday, I was absolutely shot, done. I'm actually even behind on my split as well, and I'm having to catch up this weekend with an extra session. But even though I'm having to catch up, and even though it's been a tiring week, I still feel like it's been a successful week. I'm excited that size is actually coming on now. I actually got tighter in week one, so going into week two, we've upped my calories, and I'm feeling bigger, fuller, stronger, and getting some really insane pumps when I'm training. Today I've got a really interesting vlog for you. I'm gonna talk about my overarching timeline towards WBFF Worlds in Vegas. I'm gonna introduce my coach who's helped me plan this timeline and the strategy behind this timeline to try and build me a winning physique. So the first part of my training and planning towards this event came down to me finding a coach. And I like having a coach for a few reasons. Well, firstly, I am a coach myself, so you could be thinking, why don't I just coach myself? But when you do your own coaching, it's very possible to you know, second guess yourself, to you know, worry that what you've planned isn't right, and to actually hold yourself to be accountable to yourself. Uh, because if you don't do something, you know, no one finds out, only you find out. And are you gonna hold yourself accountable all the time? Um, so those are some things to consider, mainly the second guessing and the accountability are the main reasons why I want to get a coach. But also because of that outside eye too, you, know, you see yourself every single day in the mirror, um, you've been training you know, a certain way for however long, it's really good to have a second pair of eyes on things, especially if it's a you know, really well educated second pair of eyes. And the person I chose to work with is Dr. Paul Rimmer. Now, I'm trying to think of a way to describe Paul in terms of you know who he is and what he does, but he's got his finger in so many pies now that it's really hard to be like, he is you know, this, he is that. Uh, how I like to describe Paul is you know an up and coming industry you know knowledge body who's actually very underrated and unrecognized at the moment. Hi guys, my name is Dr. Paul Rimmer. I'm the head of fitness education here at Mass. Um, I've recently been brought on board to help you know develop your guys' knowledge, um, no matter where you're from, no matter what your background is, no matter what sport you do. Um, Paul is a coach, of course, he's an online coach. Um, he has a PhD, so he knows how to research things. Um, he has you know, undergrads in nutrition. Uh, Paul has his own performance organization where he actually tracks performance output of professional athletes for sports teams. He has a coaching in terms of the education side of coaching, not you know coaching that I'm getting from him, but he has educational platform for coaching where he runs events, seminars, gets speakers over to give talks, um, and he is Matt's head of fitness education. I chose to work with Paul for a few reasons. Firstly, he is really evidence-based. I said before, he has a PhD, he researches everything, and if he doesn't know something, he will go and find it out. And one of the reasons why I'm really pleased that he is very evidence-based is because going into this competition and starting these vlogs, I want to be working with somebody who can work with me to really deliver the whys behind my training. You know, why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? Um, and someone who can help me with that information so that I can relay it to you. And Paul has been you know, very helpful with that. And actually a lot of what I'm about to say coming up is straight from Paul. Secondly, as Paul is Mass's head of fitness education, he's been designing Mass lots of seminars and guides for all of our members. And because that's the information that Mass is gonna be building a lot of its education platform on, I want to have, you know, practiced all of his methods and really understand them so they can help me as well to deliver that education to our members. The mass education platform is also quite new, so I want to show all of our audience you know, just how much value is in this education plan that we're putting out based on you know what they can see in terms of how Paul's guiding me and also want to show them just how smart Paul is so they can yeah, really see the value that we're getting in this, this mass education platform. A lot of the education and the things that I will focus on throughout the educational series and the workshops is to actually help lay down the, I guess, 
as close to the facts as you can get as opposed to a lot of the sensationalist stuff that you see within the media um, because it can be an uphill battle um, and it's one of the things that I think you know when I, I discussed with David about coming on board I said you know it's it's okay to be able to tell people how to get stronger or how to get leaner or you know build a better physique but um, you know ultimately I think doing that in the healthiest way possible is really important and I think that's where the value of education comes in um, for most people. The work Paul's going to be doing for me is you know, writing my training programs, writing my diet plans so that I literally don't need to think. I can just do, do, do. I'm going to have to check in with him, sending weight and reports on you know, how the week's gone, how I deviated from diet, how's training been. Um, I'm going to have to also check in you know maybe a few times across the week for weight only so you can see weight fluctuations across the week and that's pretty much it he'll plan all my stuff and i just get to do and i really like that aspect of having a coach because you know i'm a guy that just likes to crack on with things and get things done and not over sweat the detail um, and when i'm planning stuff myself i do often over sweat the detail so you know, having paul plan those bits so that i can just crack on is good and so onto the timeline that Paul and I have devised. We have roughly seven months until the competition and the plan is to see how it goes. We're gonna start with two and a half to three, maybe four months of adding muscle and then assess where I am, which will be broken down into two six to eight week blocks of training. The idea is that in six to eight weeks time, I'll start to plateau, at which point we're gonna have what Paul's called a hell week. I'll really ramp up training intensity before having a deload to recover and super compensate and then go back it, it again for another block. This second block will be very similar to this first one that I'm on now, except in the second one we will really ramp training volume right up and intensity to the point where I quote Paul, it's fucking awful and I don't want to be there. <laughs> this deload that comes after each of these gaining blocks is gonna allow me to super compensate and come back stronger because the likelihood is when I'm six to eight weeks into these plans, performance is gonna drop, not because mentally I'm not there, just because my body is knackered and needs a rest. I still train and do all the exercises I'd normally do in a deload, but for something for say, for example, you know, it's an eight rep set, I might pick a weight where I have maybe four or five reps left in reserve. So I won't be going to full intensity. The idea is more so that I'm gonna go in, get some blood in the muscle and then get out of there. And in that week, we'll push food up too and make the most of my body crying out for food. These two blocks of gaining phases with deloads are gonna be all about adding size and adding size in areas that I need it. Following these gaining phases, we'll go into a 16 to 12 week cut, which you know, may or may not be structured into two training blocks with a deload diet phase in the middle of the game, depending on progress, you know, how tired I'm feeling and whether or not I need it. The cut is going to be all about getting absolutely shredded. The WBFF male fitness model category, there isn't such a thing as too shredded. I need to come in completely diced with cuts everywhere, not an ounce of body fat on me. And I'm really excited for that cutting phase. And then to finish it all off, the final week and a week I'll be touching down in Vegas for, it's gonna be peak week. Peak week is all about really tightening up, depleting the body and really getting vascular and full for show day. And that is my timeline. I've got gaining block, deload, and this first deload, I'm actually gonna be on a holiday in Croatia for mass on tour. Then another gaining block, deload, and then I'm into a cut, which may or may not have a diet break in the middle, followed by peak week, then it's show day. This is our rough timeline, but this could all change depending on my body, how it reacts to things. You know, I could reach six to eight weeks in this current training phase and still be gaining not be tired and we might not need to change anything so you know this is the idea this is how we think it's going to pan out but it's important as well that we're going to play it by ear and check in every week along the way so what is the strategy behind the timeline now you can still gain muscle in a calorie deficit it's just not a very efficient way of doing so so we're going to aim to really capitalize as much as possible on these last few months of off season to make the most gains that i can I'm not worried about getting shredded. I'm coming from a lean position anyway, and I have an active job. Plus, I've gotten lean in the past, and I know exactly what it takes, so I'm not too worried about that side of things. Where I've let myself down in the past, though, is the off-season and gaining muscle. So 
I'm really gonna be trying to push things as much as I can now to really pack on as much muscle as possible. Yeah, lean gains are great, but because I'm not worried about dropping body fat, I'm willing to get a little softer right now and have a little bit of body fat in order to really make sure I'm adding muscle, as I keep saying. Along this journey of me training, I'm gonna be giving talks at universities on, you know, all things mass, training and nutrition. We're gonna have the Mass Student Physique Championships at 17th of March in Bristol, be there. Tickets in the, in the description, in the comments. In April, there's the Mass Tour, and then we've also got the Mass Annual General Meeting and Awards, where we're gonna reward everybody that's put in all the hard work this year and really plan what we're gonna do into next year. These events are really crucial and really tie in with my training. And you know, I've got a goal to be at 40 universities with Mass by the time I go to Vegas. So we're at 12 universities at the moment, that is, 28 more universities to get on board before August. You can expect to see updates from me at all those major markers across the timeline, updates on how we're progressing towards our mass goal of 40 societies. You're gonna see my training, my diet, and you know, all the things I'm doing in each phase. So tune in, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.